Hey, what's going on everyone? Dominic, the primetime treasure hunter here. It's 7.30 in the morning, rise and shine on August 8th. It's a Saturday. I am getting a jump on the big event today. It is by far the biggest garage sale event in central New York. Uh, they do it every year traditionally in May, but this year it was canceled because of the coronavirus pandemic. It wasn't scheduled to happen until September as a reschedule. Well, I was doing some searching last night in terms of where I was going to go today to do some treasure hunting. And to my surprise, I saw that the event is going on this weekend. So we're going to head out there and see what treasures we could find. Let's get after it. So this is what I was talking about. This development is huge. I mean, this street just goes down really far and there's just all these side streets to go down and each one of them is just like its own mini development and it just keeps going and going and going and going. All right, just turn the corner and here is the first one. So let's see if there's anything here. So I thought that this was a good start. The woman who ran this garage shell worked for that company, Usborne, which is known for making some pretty cool sticker books. And this one here on the human body uh, doesn't really come up too often. There's a few of them right now on eBay for $21.54. So I would look to price that at $19.99 and you know, see what I could do with that one. And then there were these two other ones, the Pop Stars one, and you'll see an Extreme Sports one, uh, that I would hope to be able to get something between like 10 and 20 bucks for the two. I paid $5 for uh, the three of them. She originally wanted two bucks a piece, so I figured this is a good start to the day. So I always love it when I could find something at the first sale that I stop off at. I feel that it gives me good luck for the rest of the day. I don't know if you feel the same way. Uh, let me know down below. So uh, we'll see if it's true or not. Let's uh, go around and see what else is here. So early observations is that although it's early, you know, it's 8.30, but the sales are supposed to start at 8.00. And I go to this every year. I cannot believe how few people are out. Not only set up, but also looking for stuff. I mean, traditionally, house after house after house is already set up. There are cars just lined up everywhere. I mean, sometimes you could barely get a spot. And it's just, look at this, it's just dead. I mean, no matter where I look, it's just, you know, crazy. I mean, I'm hoping more people set up at nine o'clock, but my goodness, this is just a really slow start to the day, a much slower than prior years. 2020, folks. All right, so I decided to let the people in that development wake up, enjoy their coffee, you know, have their croissants and all that stuff and uh, head over to a different sale across the way in a totally different development. Uh, there's a local ad of someone who's selling Funko Pops and comic books, so you know that's right up my alley. Prices seemed a little high on some of the stuff in the ad, but it's worth checking out, so, you know, being so nearby. So let's see what he's got. All right, so as you can see, I am the first person here, and so I am claiming dibs on whatever this guy brings out first. All right, well, they're starting to bring stuff out, but where's the Funkos and comic books? <laughs> so I just had to laugh when I saw these prices, $15 per comic book and trade paperback. That is just not going to work. So big thumbs down for those prices. Uh, I did look over though and picked up a Halloween costume. It was new, never used. So as long as it's a good theme, if you could pick these up for five bucks or less, uh, look into it. All right, so I was actually able to get this for just a dollar because everything there was 50% off except for the comic books and the Funkos. Uh, they just wanted to blow the rest of the stuff out. They had a sale yesterday, and so this is some of the stuff that was left. I should be able to sell this for around $17, and it ships first class, so I should be able to make you know a little bit over 10 bucks on it. Uh, now, in terms of those comics and Funkos, the Funkos were really high priced. I mean, they had like $30 per Funko, which is not where 
where you want to purchase them for resale. You really want to get them for around, you know, two bucks or so. If you're shipping them, if you have a brick and mortar, maybe around three bucks. If you're buying them as a lot, that would be like your individual price. Maybe pay up a little bit more if you're getting something really, really high crazy value in there. For the comic books, trade paperbacks and stuff, those thicker comics that basically have multiple stories in them, there's just no way I was paying those kind of prices, $15 per book, $4 for a regular comic book, just doesn't make any sense. In fact, earlier this week, I made a great deal with somebody on Craigslist who I've dealt with before and he reached out to me and uh, he said, hey, I have more stuff. Uh, so I went over there and wound up getting 80 of those trade paperbacks or in like mint condition or near mint condition, plus a whole bunch of other stuff, games, promo items and stuff uh, for $80. So it wound up being less than a dollar per item. And those are the types of deals that you want to make, not a deal like this. So uh, now we're going to head back over to that development and see if people in that neighborhood have woken up yet. So let's check it out. <laughs> So there was one new place open when I got back and they had this really cool Nebraska Cornhuskers starter jacket. Always look for vintage starter jackets. Uh, they're very popular in the early 1990s. I used to wear them and uh, a lot of people love them for just comfort and the look is still cool. It still holds up to this day. Uh, so I wound up sourcing this for $10.00. Uh, should be able to sell it for right around 40 so you figure you know, like $7.50 to $10 shipping. So should be able to make around 20 bucks on it. All right, well, I'm going to have to make an executive decision here because my initial excitement about this community garage sale has just not paid off for three main reasons. Number one, there's much fewer sales than in prior years. Number two, the sales that are open tend to be ones that have baby clothes and or baby toys. And number three, the ones that do have anything collectible and more in my wheelhouse are really things that are not generally vintage and have a really crazy high sticker price on them so they don't leave any meat on the bone in terms of uh, resale potential. So I've seen enough and at a certain point you've got to know when to just fold it and get out and you know use your time more wisely in other areas. So for me that means hitting up some estate sales and looks like there's a rummage sale as well going on so we'll see what's going on there. So as you can see I'm outside the church for the rummage sale. Only one problem the rummage sale is next week, not today. So, so much for the good luck sticker book that I purchased earlier today. Man, oh gosh. So I'm going to head over to the, uh, to the state sales. There, we should definitely do better. All right, so there's the house and I'm excited. The juices are flowing as soon as I'm walking up the driveway. And uh, I actually see a box on the driveway with some Sierra Club bags. I've done very well with these before, all different types. Uh, these go for around 20 bucks. I got them for a dollar a piece. Then in the garage, there was a bunch of vintage stuff. So I just started looking through the books and uh, picked this up. They're charging almost nothing for it, like 25 cents, 50 cents. And uh, one of these actually just sold recently for around like $16, $20, something like that. There's a few loose pages there, but as long as you could say that it's complete, you'll be okay with that. So uh, I looked in this box of songbooks, and that one there, I saw one of them, and now these go back to 1932, uh, sold for 10 bucks. So I looked, and I'm like, wow, look, there's all different ones. And if you look at the top left you'll see that there's all different uh, instruments and stuff that are selected for these songbooks. So I said, I'll just scoop up a whole big lot of these. And uh, I don't know, I think I got like 10 of them or so. So that was nice. And then right below that, uh, I just dropped those in the box. Uh, right below that, you could see uh, here's some smaller uh, marching band books, march books. Uh, so band books, there's all sorts of you know cool little books here. Looks like uh, John Philip Sousa. So that one goes back to 1898. So I didn't even have to look those up. I was just like, all right, we'll get those. Now, there were a bunch of loose pages on top that was hiding all that stuff, which is why it probably stayed there for so long. This was neat right here. The uh, Lifeline 
uh, rotor cable. I like this not only for the cable, 100 feet of it, but that it's new in the box. So yeah, I may be able to get like 20 bucks or so out of that, maybe even more because of the box. Uh, look really neat. Yardsticks, do not pass these up. Look up the comps on yardsticks. People love using these for crafting and will pay up big money for them, but you got to have a bunch of them usually. So you just save them up. If you get like 26 of them or so, you could sell them for like $100, $115. So uh, I just scoop those up and I'll keep them to the side. Make sure you look over pencils if there's something vintage about it. Like uh, that right there is an old Detroit Tigers one. Someone will spend like 10 to 15 bucks just for a pencil. Uh, cassette players, you know, I always look after these and uh, uh, try to pick them up uh, when they work. So pick that one up for three bucks and that should sell for about $25, $30. This is just really weird. This embalming uh, VHS uh, cassette. I cannot see any comps for anything like this. And it's so weird. It's so out of the ordinary that I just picked it up. Like this is something I literally could price for $99.99 and you never know someone might purchase it. Um, and then also look for like obscure things like this, like Arnold Loxham. He's a famous concert uh, organist. And so, you know, his stuff sells. If you look it up, uh, they sell. There was a box of uh, cassette tapes there. And so I picked up some good ones. The blank one, the Pink Floyd one right there. Uh, that's a really good one. So Dark Side of the Moon. Then there was a Best of the Eagles one and two ACDC cassettes. So the Pink Floyd one goes for around 25. So uh, did really well just picking up those. They only wanted 50 cents a piece for the cassettes. This explains some of the music books. Uh, the guy who actually uh, owned the house did not pass away. He was there and he was walking around. He was like in his 80s and he was uh, moving from here to Connecticut. So they were just blowing everything out, just showing you the room, the old TV. Uh, there wasn't anything good on the bookcase, but I just want to show you the prices. So when you see a dollar for hardcovers and paperbacks, 50 cents, you know you're dealing with a good situation. So I start hearing this voice. It's saying, prime time. Oh, prime time. I look down and I see this beautiful brunette on the poster and she's asking me to come down the staircase. So I say, okay, I'm like enchanted. I walk down and I start hearing like flutes playing in the background and harpsichords and everything. <laughs> She's saying, I'm like in a trance. She's like, come over to me, unpin me now, prime time. So I take the top pin off. I take that pin off as well. That Oops, <laughs> I just blew my first date, but she's okay. I pick her up. I put her uh, back up there. There's no comps for that specific poster, but look at the one below. That's amazing. That was hidden in the back. Uh, it's an American Cancer Society poster, but it's actually a sexy poster. Look at that. It's, you know, uh, you know, kiss someone who's a non-smoker and uh, taste the difference. That's awesome. So I picked that up. I looked over to the left and the right, and I saw a bunch of potential things to go after and look at. So it was a fun little basement area uh, for me to explore. The uh, construction projects uh, book there, uh, that's a good one. That's worth around like 14 bucks or so for CB radios. They're both Lafayettes. So I picked them both up, bundled them, hope to get like, eh, like 20, 25 bucks out of them maybe. Uh, this coin book one here is really cool. I like how it has the uh, uh, circus theme to it. A really neat, nice vintage book. Uh, that one would comp out at around $15 or so. And same thing with this stencil book. It has a little line on it, but that doesn't really matter because inside the most important thing is that all the stencil templates are intact. So that's really good to see. You don't come across that too often. Little defect there on the bottom, but that's just a little crease. So you could just fold that out. Now, this is a good tip here. I love looking through this stuff and people pass this stuff all the time because it just looks like a bunch of boring papers, but then take it out and look what you see. I've talked about these before, these fanzines. So these were ways that, uh, you know, before we had the internet and stuff that, you know, people could be creative and, you know, get involved in things like, you know, making their own comics and making their own stories and sending it out to a small group of subscribers. And this basically, these, these kind of things came out mostly in the 1980s or some in the 70s. And I have done very well selling these types of things, you know, depending on which ones you get, 
uh, there are individual ones that could sell for well over $100. So I picked that one up uh, and she actually gave it to me for free. Uh, here's an oscilloscope. Again, it's the second straight week coming across one of these and the second straight week that, it, week that it's broken. Now, yeah, you could argue maybe you could sell some of these things for parts, but for 30 bucks, I was not getting that for parts. People don't really look after oscilloscopes uh, in that degree of intensity uh, that they're going to pay up a ton for it. This here, I didn't get anything in this room, but I'm just pointing out here, make sure you're looking behind things. I always talk about that. Now, this isn't really worth anything. It's cool. It's a whisk stain removal wheel. Now, ironically, it has a bunch of stains on it. Uh, that will not be able to be removed. Uh, but there's someone right now selling six of these for like $10 and change. So I just left it behind. But again, I just want to point out, make sure you are looking behind things. Um, I initially thought I might get it, but then when I checked the comps, I said, nah, it's just not going to be worth it. Now, of course, what would one of my estate sale uh, ventures be without a dungeon and a scary room? People were literally calling this the scary room when walking by it. Some people didn't even want to walk into it. That's how scared they were of the room. Uh, there was this stack of boxes, and I'm sure you know what's going to happen here, right? There's uh, four stacks of boxes, and I start going through them. And, you know, there's nothing that's worth getting here up top. There's a bunch of old electronics magazines. There were some, you know, books that were just covered in mildew. And then, of course, when I get to the bottom, you know, I already know there's probably something down there because it's on the bottom. And, you know, sure enough, I start going through it. And I come across some things that aren't really um, worth much, you know, including you know, this one right here. But then when I get over here, I get this really cool 50th anniversary 1973 Radio Shack catalog. People love catalogs. And they love flipping through them and seeing what was available back in the day. And this is in great shape. Look at the nice colors inside. You know, people love looking at the devices. Then they try to track them down. This one's worth about $15 to $18. But, uh, you know, not bad considering that I'm going to source it for, you know, next to nothing practically. So uh, just toss that one uh, in the box. And I'm just showing you the date there, 1973. Uh, oh, no. Oh, no. I'm possessed. I'm, look at this. I'm getting a different color of my skin because of all the corrosion in the room. No, I'm just kidding. It's just some ink that rubbed off. But there's another tip. If it's a name, even if it's not super common, if it's somewhat common, that's cast iron. Someone whose last name is Schumacher will pick that up for, from me one day. So that was a cool find. Uh, there's another room I looked through, a lot of electronic stuff. but uh, And I checked it out, but a lot of it was just junky or just broken and stuff. So uh, there was a Craftsman drill that was cool. So um, I couldn't even find any comps on this model. So I'm going to plug it in and you could hear how it works. So I picked up the drill because someone will still buy that for sure. Uh, look at these little boxes. You never know what you might find. Look at that. Just, just little cool... Uh, old vintage uh, mini coloring book. So, you know, it's something I could just add into a lot. Oops. Uh, sorry, little girl, but uh, she's okay. So I'll just put her over there. Then, uh, as I've mentioned this uh, earlier this year, make sure you look uh, at these things. Uh, they look boring, but just poke it a little bit like that and just make sure, you know, as long as it's new and sealed, uh, that it's squishing down because that means, uh, you know, that it's still a viable product most likely. And that one sells for like 13 bucks, 15 bucks. Uh, there were a lot of um, different bookcases and little rooms to explore upstairs. And uh, this was a good room because right straight across, I came uh, across this really cool a throw and you got to open these up. Like I said, this is from Scotia, New York, which is uh, located in Schenectady, which is about three hours away from me uh, to the east. And so someone's definitely going to buy that. I love the fringes on it, the buildings and stuff. Now I know about the quilts and to look for quilts, but not paying $75 for that quilt. No way. Uh, but I will pay 50 cents for this really cool Bambi uh, pillowcase. Someone would pay up to twenty dollars just for one pillowcase. You don't always have to have two. Someone might just want to, you know, replace one pillow from when they were younger and uh, get something they used to have. 
Now, this one I passed up on. It looked really cool, but the problem is, well, first of all, it's $30, and second of all, it was very scratchy. Like, it didn't feel comfortable. I felt someone would return it. So, um, this one here this is the only book I picked up here uh, by Sid Hoff, uh, who I remember from Danny and the Dinosaur. Many of you read that as a kid. Uh, this book is not one that often comes up to market right now. Uh, it's you know, about 20, 25 bucks. So pick that one up as well for a buck. So that was pretty much it. The rest of it was just old academic electronics books for the most part. A little staining on the back, but since it doesn't come up to market often, I, f I dropped something in the background there as usual. So uh, it was time to get out of there. Not anything left. All right, so I am so glad that I left those garage sales because this estate sale really paid off. Every single thing there I got for $25.50, you could see how they broke down the prices for things. A lot of things they just threw in for free, like the posters, the fanzine magazine and stuff. I mean, they were just like, here, have it, have it, take it. So, I mean, I think overall did very well. Going to try to hit up one last estate sale for today. Okay, so another nice old area. Hopefully there's some stuff left at the sale. There's only about two hours left. I could tell it's right up there on the left. So the pictures online, it looked a little stuffy in there. So I don't know, we'll see what it's actually like when we get in there. Okay, so this is the house here, this white one. So let's take a peek inside. All right, so this is what you see as soon as you walk into the house. Uh, I just took a little look around and decided to walk over towards uh, some of those statues, which I'll show you in a minute, and uh, these cassettes and CDs. I picked up these two sealed cassettes, so I'll add that to the one I got earlier. And then I love this Virgin Mary piece. I do very well with them. Now, there's some writing underneath in pen. But, you know, I'm not too worried about that because no one's going to see that when they display it. And I just do very well with Virgin Mary pieces. She both looks vintage and modern to me at the same time. She holds up very well in terms of her looks. And she's from the 1980s, so uh, based on the date on the bottom. So I thought it was a really cool uh, piece, and I'm looking forward to trying to sell that one. Uh, this was really neat, too. Uh, it's by Elaine Thomas. Uh, she makes these... Uh, basically reproductions of primitives and this is based off of the Winnie the Pooh character so I love this one and I love how they have like the bees surrounding the honey sticking out with the wire so really cool only four dollars uh, decided to pick that one up as well uh, then uh, to my right I saw this little piggy bank sitting there with the flowers for only two bucks it's great it's got the stopper underneath you always want to check for that you know, comps are all over the board on these types of things, but you should at least be able to get $20 out of it. Uh, this one is really cool, the bear with the bluebird. Uh, it's got a little uh, battery part in the back, and it sings uh, zippity doo -dah from the Song of the South. A lot of people would actually like that because of the Splash Mountain ride and that going away. So every time I see these electronic chairlifts, by the way, I always think of the Gremlins movie when the granny goes flying out the... Uh, the door when the gremlins, <laughs> so you always, always think it out when I see these types of things. But uh, and they were actually selling that, believe it or not, for $300. By the way, that bear and a bluebird comps for like $30 to $40. So you could see what I mean up here about it being very, um, very stuffy. Uh, but as soon as I walk in, I see one of these granny square uh, crochet blankets. So I've done very well with these. I sold a bigger one like this earlier in the year for around 125 bucks. This one's a little smaller, but very similar. Uh, so I picked that up for just a few bucks. So I uh, walked around uh, into some other rooms, but uh, didn't really find much else. Uh, you know, just showing you, it was really just kind of, you know, like I said earlier, just kind of stuffy up here. Uh, a lot of rooms were mostly bare. So, you know, I was able to be pretty efficient in there and just pick out the few things that were left that I felt had, you know, any value in it. So just show you one last room here again, uh, pretty bare, uh, but I like to show you, you know, the things that are in the house. So circling back, those are the stairs. I went up and so, uh, you know, that's the room that had that throw in it. So I said, you know what? All right, it's time to call it a day. Uh, I feel um, vindicated overall with uh, how I did. All right, so I wound up getting everything there for just $19. So I'm very happy with that. It was a very efficient use of my time. I wasn't even there long and the two estate sales were not far from one another at all. 
Uh, so, you know, that's something to be mindful of is trying to be efficient with your time, especially as your business is growing. And if you find yourself in a situation like I did this morning where things just aren't working out for whatever reason, you know, you're driving around to a bunch of garage sales in a certain area and you just find for whatever reason that, you know, it's all just junky stuff or it's all kid stuff or it's all stuff that essentially you can't really use for your reselling business. At that point, you've got to recognize when it's time to just, you know, like they say, you got to know when to fold them and you've got to then go in a different direction. Now, don't get me wrong. If that was the only game in town today and that's all that was going on, yeah, you could keep going on and being persistent and see if you could find something else. But it doesn't mean you're quitting in a negative way or in a you know, pejorative way if you decide to allocate your resources, which is your time, in a more productive way. That's just a smart use of your time. And so for me, in my area, Central New York, estate sales are just terrific because there's so much vintage stuff and the price, as you can see, is often excellent. I know there are people who watch this channel who say that in their area that estate sales are just not good, but you know, if that's the case, then estate sales won't be what you focus on in your area. It will be something that's really good in your area that's not so good in mine. So every region has their own strengths and you know disadvantages. Now, in terms of uh, speaking of managing time, you know, you will notice that over the last few days, which is unusual for me, that I didn't put up a video. And there's a reason for that. Uh, actually, there's several reasons for that. Number one, I was just, you know, totally exhausted, which is unusual for me because I'm typically, as you know from watching the channel, a pretty high energy uh, guy. But the combination of just my business growing and working on the um, flood renovation project, which is another reason that's taking me off of the stuff that I normally do. And there's a lot of kind of drama behind the scenes with that things. Every time I take one step forward, I take two steps back. We have more contractors coming in on September 10th to continue the project. So I don't want to show you the finished project for that or finished product until that is all done. So that's another thing. And then the other thing is that I don't want to just put up a video for you just to say I put up a video. When I put up a video, I want you to know that when I put it up, it's something that I think you could get something out of. It's something that would be both, hopefully both educational and entertaining in some way. And so I'm working on a project right now behind the scenes that takes a little bit of research to do. It's one of those kind of PowerPoint presentation things I do, but I think a lot of people find it interesting and that'll be coming up probably the beginning of next week. So look out for that. But Overall, I hope you enjoyed the video. If so, make sure you hit the like button. Make sure you uh, comment, question, you know, if you have a question, and make sure you subscribe. And by the way, hit the alert button up top, that bell up top. A lot of people missed the last Chichingathon that I had because they didn't have their alerts set. And that's the only way that uh, you will know for sure that I'm going live, unless you're checking like my Facebook group. Don't forget to join that, the Facebook Reselling Resource Center. All those links are down below. That's it for today, folks. I'll see you back the next one. Take care. Hey, Daisy, where are you? There you are. What's up, Daisy? <laughs> How you doing? Hi, I haven't seen you all day. What's going Whoa, look at that big jump. What's up? All your fans miss you. They haven't seen you in a while. They just want to see that you're doing all right. You're doing good. Thanks for uh, keeping us safe from the squirrels and the bunny rabbits. All right, Daisy, and look at that bow tie. Look at that nice, you want to show off your bow tie to everybody? Look at that, oh, you little camera shot right there. How pretty is that? All right, Daisy, I'll see you later. <laughs> Bye.